Eureka Street Crypto Hub broadcasting live on Theta TV from Leander, Texas at 5.18 in the morning on Sunday, May 9th, 2021. Yes, sir. It is an early morning for me. Um, <clears throat> that's because I'm trying to hurry up and get this uh, show done this morning because I'm at the house by myself with the kids and uh, yeah, they're probably going to start getting restless. I already saw the little one getting a little restless in the crib this morning. So I was like, man, I better get down there and do the deal before I won't have time to do a show. My wife, I sent her off to a fancy hotel in downtown Austin, Texas for Mother's Day night. So uh, she went out with the girls and is, you know, basking and quiet alone time um, I don't know about quiet or whatever she's doing um, but uh, without kids <laughs> that's that's the important thing for her um, so yeah so in, in the meantime it's me and the kids and I'm trying to get this show done early in the morning and uh, get it done so you know um, if you're a, uh, if you have kids and uh, your mom, uh, the, your wife, or your husband is alone with the kids all day. Um, be sure to give them a night every once in a while out in a hotel to do whatever they want, or a whole day out with their friends or whatever. So <laughs> people need a little bit of uh, uh, alone time sometimes to uh, have a good, healthy snap back. And then when they, and whenever she comes home, I'm, she's going to be in a totally good mood and I'm gonna be completely worn out so but it's a trade-off right uh, thus is marriage all right anyway so uh, let's get down to the brass tacks um, I got some coin gecko here let me refresh this screen yesterday was an interesting day for ethereum um, ethereum you know everybody thought you know Ethereum going to 3500 was crazy stuff right um, well, now Ethereum, I think it hit almost hit. Did it hit 4,000? I don't know. Let's see here. Let's look at the, the all time high because that's what it would be. It got up to 39.91.18. So it's just playing with the $4,000 um, little all time high mark there. I, I think it's going to hit it very soon. Um, Probably not today. I mean, it being Sunday and the markets are usually a little quieter, but a lot, a lot of this is institutional money um, that have been kind of hovering around Ethereum and waiting for a good spot to make their landing. I think they're finally landing, and, uh, and while everybody's all up in a you know a hype about Doge, um, the real money is uh, focusing on Ethereum. And um, yes, as you can see, it is reflected right here. Um, so if you're invested in Ethereum, like I am, then congratulations, wise choice. Um, Bitcoin, 57,777.90 cents. It's been going sideways for about a week, but going sideways between 55 and $60,000 is not really that bad of a thing, honestly. So, hey. I'll take it, right? Um, and uh, Binance Coin, 6, 6967, uh, XRP, $1.52. Uh, the Doge dropped 32.5%. A lot of people were just begging Elon Musk to have some kind of amazing, hilarious Saturday Night, not Saturday night Live appearance last night because they wanted Doge to keep pumping to a dollar and they keep on, Mark Cuban and Elon Musk keep pumping the Doge coin. But I'm telling you, and I've been telling you for the past three days, I got a bad feeling about this. So, uh, yeah, and it's dropped 32.5%. Doge is hype. Invest in something with some fundamentals. But uh, what do I know? I'm just some, you know, dude with a video camera, um, you know, documenting his own crypto experience without any type of uh, solid legitimacy or anything like that. Let's see what else we. I wanted to. See. Uh, everybody is calling out Doge now. Doge going to a dollar. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Uh, okay. So yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't usually deal in shite coins, but I loaded up a 3x doge short on FTX. Let the SNL dump begin, <laughs> as per Texan Hodel. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Daddy, what did you mean? What did you do when the Rocket Man went on TV? Went 3x short his bags. Legend. Uh, all right. Well, okay. It's enough picking on the Doge for the now. You know. I do like Dogecoin. I think it's a funny concept and a funny meme. But yesterday, like I said, you know, uh, when I uh, talked about the Andre Kronhey, uh tweet, basically saying, uh, here, I'll just pull it up again real quick. I don't like Doge. It's a meme. But I also didn't like LOL Cats. LOL Cats captured attention and trained early users on the internet. And that's what LOL Cats did for the internet. Doge will probably do that for crypto. In that regard, Doge is more meaningful than most. And then he goes on to follow up saying, just in case the comparison wasn't clear, where is LOL Cats today? And basically, LOL Cats, if you don't know what those are, they're basically <clears throat> cat memes. All right, so <laughs> cat memes. They trained people on how to use memes, basically. So, all right, so let's keep on going down the list here. Ah, we got no, Tether, all right. 99 cents, yay. Uh, Cardano, $1.71, up 26.7% in the past seven days and 5.1% in the past 24 hours. Pretty good. Keep it on, keep on, keep it on, Cardano. Polkadot, 39.26, at 6.5% in the past seven days. Bitcoin Cash, 36.1% in the past seven days, down 4.9%. Litecoin, Litecoin's been doing good, man. I've been kind of growing in my sentiments towards Litecoin in the past, uh, I guess, week or so. Um, ever since I learned that Litecoin, uh, that Komodo is going to be notarizing its delayed proof of work on Litecoin, I think that's pretty cool. Um, Chainlink, 48.65, um, it has been toying around with $50, it going up and then going down, going right up, and then it's been hovering around that $50 mark, and uh, yeah, so yeah, all the simps keep wanting to see Junko's boobs. Um, Junko's probably a man, so I don't think we're going to see some boobs, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> as long as it keeps staying above 50, I don't care. Um, so Uniswap, 39.41, USD coin, a dollar, wow. Um, Ethereum Classic, so Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum Classic have both been pumping, and, um, look at the number of projects that use Ethereum Classic. Can you name any? No? Yeah. Um, so it's probably not a good choice for investment. I'm a part of the Facebook Ethereum group, even though I don't really, I just, I don't use Facebook. I just kind of lurk on it. And, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions about Ethereum classic because Ethereum is pumping like, well, should I just get Ethereum classic? And I'm like, eh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't get Ethereum classic. I admire the people that stuck, that, that um, dug in and held their ground back when Ethereum did the hard fork. And what happened is Ethereum, um, a few years ago, uh, the, it got hacked. And uh, it, everybody, in order to save the funds, because Ethereum was a young new blockchain at the time, and there was lots and lots of money um, tied up and being drained from Ethereum. Um, so they kind of made a unilateral decision to go ahead and fork Ethereum to create the Ethereum we have now. And then the people that said, no, it's decentralized. We're sticking to our principles. It doesn't matter if we lose our money. That's what happens with decentralization. And I totally admire that. Don't get me wrong. So that's what Ethereum Classic is. That's the original blockchain that did not get forked to Ethereum as what it is today um, because these people did not want to compromise on the principles and that is absolutely admirable. Um, apparently there's been another EIP, uh, was it 999 or EIP 199 or EIP 99 or something like that, it's Ethereum Improvement Protocol and in DAOs and in governmental uh, 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 parts of blockchains everybody votes on particular issues and they're called improvement protocols. Well EIP 1559 is an improvement pr protocol, BIP is an improvement protocol, Bitcoin improvement protocol. Every blockchain has their 
uh, uh, improvement protocols. Well, there's this one improvement protocol where they were also voting to to um, alter the blockchain again in some way, and they voted against it. So that that there showed that that um, the DAO hack that made Ethereum Classic happened one time and one time only because apparently after that all the Bitcoiners and the Bitcoin maximalists basically and you know anybody not into crypto were saying see I told you the model would not work um, you're just like everybody else you're not decentralized you you know are you're gonna fail it's not gonna work and then along comes I think it was EIP 99 but let me see here EIP dash 99 where they had another choice to kind of do something similar and they they, they voted it down uh, let's see here uh, 999 yeah um, so let's take a quick look EIP 999 um, was when they were given another chance to kind of do something similar uh, what happened um, somewhat okay a cauldron of dra dramatic okay uh, either we're too busy refreshing what EIP 999 drama has too much technical mumbo jumbo for the new members well the soup is being stirred again and it's perhaps time we pay attention uh, Somewhat comical incident led to a disastrous consequence. An anonymous developer managed to gain ownership to a smart contract and then killed it. But this wasn't just any smart contract. It was the underlying contract to Parity Technologies multi-sig wallet, which held 514,000 Ether. That's around worth around $250 million as of this writing. Killing the smart contract resulted in 514,000 Ether being utterly inaccessible. How did it happen? Uh, Parity goofed up on auditing their smart contracts. Um, okay, so then what? Okay, um, around 600 wallets had their funds rendered inaccessible indefinitely. Parity now had a lot of unhappy customers, some of which are big name ICOs. However, that Parity hasn't lost any funds themselves. A solution was proposed a couple months ago, EIP 999, and EIP is simply Ethereum Improvement Pro Proposal. Uh, yeah, proposal, not protocol. But in simple terms, the proposal was let's just simply restore the contract with the patch. This patch would replace the self-destructed contract with a brand new contract. This new contract basically allowed users to access their funds and it contained a bug or for the previous bug. No big deal, right? What's the big deal? It's simple, but the consequences are not. A code change like this will result in a hard fork. A hard fork isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, in fact, the Metropolis upgrade was a hard fork and everything turned out fine. And it's when we have a contentious hard fork that things get really ugly. Why? Because a hard fork requires miners and nodes to perform a software update. If the software update is contentious, controversial slash debated, then we may not have 100% agreement on the upgrade. If some participants decide to upgrade and others don't, they will fork off into two different chains like what happened with Ethereum Classic. We'll have a chain split fact fracturing the network and the community. An EIP 999 unfortunately turned out to be a contentious proposal. Why is it contentious? Some people say it's the right thing to do, but others say it's not the fair thing to do. And then there are code is law advocates. There are many camps, but ultimately it's either EIP 999 for it or against EIP 99. A vote took place to gauge community support. 39.4 voted for it, 55% voted against it. The vote was informal, but it was enough to see the community was at odds. And that's why you should care. Because if there was enough people who disagreed with the other side, then a chain split will occur. At that point, it won't matter what's fair, what's right, what's law, etc. But the community will be fractured and a narrative will be spun for both sides. What now? A few days ago, EIP 99 was said as accepted on GitHub because it was not technically objected by the devs. It was done in error and it was quickly reverted, but it still stirred things up. Um, so anyway, that's what that was about. It didn't end up going through. Um, in 2008 financial crisis, big banks were bailed out to utter disdain of the public. Regardless, and that's basically what formed Bitcoin, y'all. Um, regardless of whether the bailouts were the right move or not, people were upset. But unlike the Ethereum network, people couldn't simply fork off. It's up to the community to step up and show that we are better than the rest. Somebody is going to have to bite the bullet and set the stage for future dilemma, dilemmas. Who's it going to be? Either way, it's now evident that we need more thought and discussion put into the governance process, auditing smart contracts, and more seriousness. Now, this is obviously an old post. Um, let's see, two years ago. But um, it, it just goes to show, um, we have EIP 1559 then. But originally, and I got onto this by talking about Ethereum Classic and what 
you know, about how I kind of admire the original principles of the Ethereum Classic um, fork um, and then what made Ethereum as it is today because while Ethereum was still a very young blockchain, it got hacked and funds are being drained out and everybody was losing all their money. And they voted you know, as you know, a, a, a protocol to fork and create Ethereum as it is today, and thus led the people that uh, were wanted to stay absolutely tried and true to the decentralization uh, principles um, formed. A, well, Ethereum Classic w was a, made as a result. I wouldn't say Ethereum Classic was formed. Ethereum was formed from what Ethereum Classic was. So Ethereum forked off, created a new chain. That's Ethereum today. Ethereum Classic went on as the original chain. But Ethereum Classic doesn't really have any projects now. And Ethereum is the one that everything's built on. Um, I don't know why that is, but, but that's just the way it is. But Ethereum came up and had this issue and EIP 999 pop up later on when there was another hack. And yeah, um, apparently they they lost 514,000 either. And that's a lot. And you know, at, at that time of the writing, it was 250 million bucks. That's a lot of money, but it just goes to show when you truly want to decentralize something and you claim it's absolutely decentralized, you need to stick to that. Even when somebody uh, gets in a lot of trouble, you know, um, there's no bailouts in crypto and, and there shouldn't be bailouts. And if there is, you need to ask yourself, is it uh, truly decentralized? Is it worth it? You know, so... Uh, yeah, interesting things that I'm learning about every single day um, about crypto. And every single day I learned something new and I learned about EIP 999. I learned about EIP 999 when I was listening to the Bankless podcast. Um, I'm a subscriber to Bankless and uh, uh, I got to get a, a preview listen to them interviewing Vitalik Buterin about the concept of legitimacy. And in this instance EIP 999 happened to pop up um, in, in about the conversation about legitimacy what makes legitimacy well legitimacy is sticking to your principles and then after EIP 999 here got shot down all the critics who were saying oh well they did it once with the maker DAO hack um, you know it's obviously ethereum has been compromised and it's never going to be the same blockchain that it was ever again and it's not going to grow into this vision that they're talking about and EIP-99 by them shooting it down and saying, sorry, parody, you know, that's it. You know, I know you lost 514,000 ether, but uh, this is this is what, you know, this is what Ethereum is and this is the risks involved and that's, there's nothing more we can do about it except, you know, make a vote on it. But uh, yeah, the, the community stuck to their principles and then, you know, so a lot of Bitcoin maxis and everybody else and the haters, uh, you know, got proven wrong, so. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just a little bit of Ethereum history. Um, I did, didn't, did not mean to talk about this today. It just came up and it was fresh on my mind. Um, one of, somebody that, uh, um, I've, uh, I've been, somebody said that I have a stream of consciousness style. <laughs> I, I guess so, if that's what rambling is. Um, yeah, I ramble. Um, and uh, I, I guess I do have a stream of consciousness style and I just kind of talk about whatever uh, pops up in my head and uh, you know, it just so happened to be EIP 999 so I'll take it man I like that stream of consciousness style yeah uh, well, alright whatever you want to call it um, so let's go back to the coin gecko data network is it 1189 Solana I need to actually dig in and really investigate Solana see what the deal is with Solana I know it's some sort of kind of super fast smart contracting blockchain platform and stuff like that. Um, not an Ethereum killer. There's no Ethereum killers. Everything's gonna you know work in concert together, and everybody's gonna find their niche. So I don't know. I, I want to try to find some kind of odd blockchain here. Um, uh, every, every once in a while, I just kind of look up something totally stupid and fun. Um, about May or April of last year of 2020, I found this one, Bob's Repair. Let's take a quick look here. Bob's Repair. 
And let's check out this price action over the past year. It's gone up 377%. So that's good. Um, look here, it was going flat. And suddenly around April 21, whoop, it popped up just recently. And um, I don't know why I found this, but I did. And um, I think I found it on Digital Asset News around this time last year. And I think he was pretty much just starting out like me um, this time last year. So let's go to their website. Let's quickly go to their white paper and go to their medium. And uh, let's take a quick little gander. Um, this is a really cool, inspiring thing for a small business to do. Is to create their own blockchain. Bob's Repair, air conditioning, heating, and air quality experts. Call us now, 702-381-5080. And I wonder if this is the guy behind, or if this is Bob. I don't know. But uh, they're basically AC specialists. Um, what area code is uh, 702? Let's see here. 702 area code. Oh, shite. Hold on. <laughs> 702 area code. Let's see where this is. That's in Nevada. All right. So I guess that's around Las Vegas area. Uh, yeah, around Las Vegas. Okay. Well, good on Bob. And uh, let's see here. So he's an AC and heating specialist. Okay. See, this is great. Small business. And then somebody implementing some kind of cryptocurrency and blockchain into here. And so let's see what the deal is. Bob's Repair Strategy Part 1. It looks like they got a good team here. Um, the next step for us, this is an organization, what we do best for our purchasers, investors, customers, and overall company. Um, let's see, a message from uh, about all the COVID stuff. Token burning, $7 million token burning. Um, it's June 12th of 2019. That's all in Korean. I can't read that. Oh, right, here we go. Bob's Repair just released a new roadmap for 2019. We've achieved all of our goals for quarter one. Our monthly revenues have reached 60,000, and our autonomous buyback for contractors and customers has been working flawlessly. We are excited for what's in store for quarter two. We're planning the grand opening of our Phoenix AZ office, expanding partnerships with property management companies and we'll be providing transparency but pro providing all the pricing for materials used in repair um, let's see this roadmap and for you know a small business they they got it going on and they you know seem to be doing things right um, excited to announce that it burned seven million two hundred eighty five thousand one hundred forty four point eight tokens today uh, blockchain Pavel Rubin or the lead developer destroyed an address processing this amount of tokens with the purpose of decreasing the total supply so I guess that's to account for the spike in value to view the oh no actually this was back in shoot this was written back in June 2nd so the, that spike in value just happened this April uh, Pavel okay so as our white paper states will be burning more tokens in the future, we're excited to see the, the tremendous progress the community has achieved. We're waiting on, waiting on coin market cap to update the total token supply. Um, so ah, that's pretty cool, man. So what's the purpose of it? Uh, the, the design con. Okay, they're having kind of a design contest. Um, and let's see what else they got here. I want to see if I can find this white paper. I'm interested in it. Um, Let's see here. They're on their website because the link in uh, CoinGecko did not work. Um, about us, who we are. Possibly it's right here. Okay. So the heating and AC, the Prandecki brothers in 2014, the change of industry in air conditioning and heating is ran by the eldest brother Fred, who operates a community on empathy, honesty, and mindfulness. Strives to do honest, quality workmanship. There's no hidden cost, transparency, transparent pricing. Okay, it looks like a straight up AC company, you know? Um, yeah, okay. And let's try to find this white paper here. I wanna see this white paper. I wanna see what the, what the blockchain is all about, how they're using it in this small business context and uh, what's going on here. So let's go to token sale. Okay. Roadmap white paper using blockchain to eliminate review fraud. Interesting and provide lower pricing in the home repair industry through a decentralized platform. Huh. 
Okay. So uh, when our AC unit broke, we called a guy in Google. He had five stars. Let's see what they have to say here. This is pretty rad. I gotta say, uh, Bob's your player explainer video from the founders and team. Um, Hi, my name is Frederick Frendick. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Bob's Repair. My brother Alex and I started this company in 2014, and since then we have served 55,000 consumers to contract. Hi, my name is Alex Frendecki, and I'm the COO and co-founder of Bob's Repair. At Bob's Repair, we believe that transparency is key. By publishing all of our data to the public ledger, we're able to show out there how much contractors are charging for each job type. If you want to get your house remodeled, it shouldn't be so difficult to figure out how much it's going to cost. By reviewing all of that data out there on the ledger, we're able to make that decision and in fact we're giving that power to you as a consumer. Our goal and mission is to create pricing transparency and real reviews in the whole world. When our AC unit broke, we called a guy on Google. He had five stars. He ended up coming to our house with all of his gadgets. He goes on the roof. After 30 minutes, he comes downstairs and he says our whole AC unit is shot and cannot be fixed. He ends up quoting us $5,500, which was way too high. My brother and I were like, mm, something's wrong here. That's when we got a second opinion, a good, honest guy. The first thing he does is he comes in, he checks the air filter, he pulls it out, it's dirty. Boom, cold air is blowing. We saved $5,000. And then this whole idea came up with Bob's Repair. And our goal was to make sure that something like this never happens to anybody else in the world. Because price gouging, lack of price transparency, and fake reviews are a huge problem all around the world. And our mission and goal is to prevent this. Hi, Bob's Repair community. My name is Lance Kofers. I'm the lead front end developer at Bob's Repair. We are actually creating the first decentralized platform within the home repair market. That's where you guys come in. We really need your feedback to make sure that it's not only easy to use for you as a consumer, but also easy to use for contractors alike. We are creating a platform that has a lot of functionality. But what's very important is that it's easy to use for you as a consumer, so that you can focus on the thing that's most important, and that's getting the job done. That's why we take great care into every step we take and every move we create to make sure that it is not only functional, but also looks beautiful while you're using it. Hello, I'm Pavel Rubin, a blockchain developer at Box Repair. Currently, I'm working on an escrow service which runs on Ethereum blockchain. We want to make it available not only for people who already use cryptocurrency, but also for those who have no experience with them. Hey, I'm Brandon Kite, CTO of Bob's Repair. I'm working hard on bringing blockchain to you, making it as easy and accessible as possible. One of the great things about using blockchain is that we can ensure that reputation and reviews are able to carry on with people wherever they go. So unlike an Uber or a Lyft, people don't have to start from square one if they switch platforms. What we're enabling is a very powerful system to enable full transparency in their home repair and construction industry. At Bob's Repair, we have no transaction fees. We have no hidden advertising costs and no ways for you as a consumer to get taken advantage of. Because if a contractor tries to charge more, double or triple for a job, which is happening today in a rampant manner, that will be stored permanently. If a contractor is good, he's good. If he makes some mistakes, he's going to have to try extra hard to make up for those mistakes. So with these companies, uh, such as ours, that use blockchain technology, we're able to eliminate the middlemen and create a company that is completely out there to help you, the consumer, and change the world. We are in full development and on track to releasing our platform by the end of this year, thus creating a decentralized marketplace a consumer and contractor in the whole world. Thank you for being a part wow. of the community. Wow, this is rad, man. It um, kind of restores my faith in humanity a little bit. This is uh, amazing. I love small business. Um, I love um, independent thought. Um, I love libertarian type of mindsets. <laughs> um, this is, this is, you know, I love honesty and integrity. Um, it, when it comes to, to quoting and doing jobs, um, you know, I, I'm in the manufacturing industry and we try our hardest to be, to have integrity with that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is, this is rad. This is to me what blockchain should be about. Um, so yeah, good on you guys, man. Uh, <laughs> let me take a quick look at this white paper. Um, I had no idea that this is what I would be covering today, man. I just kind of came down here and wanted to hurry up and get a show in. 
and uh, here I am. Here's the white paper. I, I, I don't really, and they, they even audited it. I saw that here. Um, so let's take a quick look at an audit. Two audits on the blockchain. <laughs> I mean, it's solid, dude. Um, I'm going to have to sit down and read this. This is, uh, you know, this is probably worth an in depth video, not only just to talk about Bob's repair, but to talk about how blockchain can be used in small businesses all around the United States, all around the world, and uh, how we can use this advanced tech. Because blockchain, a lot of times, seems like it's a little bit off limits to the little guy, you know? And um, it shouldn't, but these people are proving that it can be done. Um, yeah, by yeah, you know, all the all, I did not think about Google reviews as being an issue. These fake five star Google reviews, and then you end up getting the shaft by somebody. Um, yeah, wow, huh? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm definitely doing a uh, um, a long format show on Bob's repair. This is this is pretty badass. So, all right, um, I've used up all my time this morning. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, once again floored as usual um, in my uh, constant discovery in the crypto world. You know, like I said, I'm just a little guy, um, little YouTuber. I don't, you know, data broadcaster. I don't. I'm not a professional of anything, and this is just me documenting my crypto journey. And I'm not sponsored by anybody. And I'm not shilling any projects. I'm just discovering new stuff every day, and this is what it's about right here. This is what it's about is why I do this. So, um, yeah, uh, give me a thumbs up and add a boy. I'm not asking for money. I got a job, but uh, uh, that helps me and it keeps me going and encourages me to keep doing stuff like this every day. And this made it absolutely worth it. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, yeah. Um, when, I, when I see the banking industry jumping into the blockchain space, you know, um, and all these billionaires constantly and millionaires, you know, talking about, you know, how they can you know, pull themselves up by their own bootstraps by investing their, just a couple million and this and that. I don't have a couple million. I got $10 and $20 I can put in per paycheck, you know? So this kind of brings it, brings it home, you know? So... All right. Well, that being said, you guys have a good Sunday. Um, it's Mother's Day. Get your mom some flowers. At least tell her you love her. And uh, if you don't love her, I'm, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you guys, um, yeah, be good. All right. Bye.